ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानंजन शलाकाया चक्षुर मिलितम ये नस्मय श्री गुरव नम Reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, if we read the cover, we'll get quality assurance is fundamental to all work undertaken by Crown worldwide, and it is practiced by all employees in their daily activities. I think it's better to have something else covering Bhagavad Gita as it is. Actually, this is the pro- this is typical. Krishna consciousness is covered by. non krishna katha krishnaitara katha we are covered by gramya katha talk of things not in relationship with everything is in relationship with krishna but we conceive of things as different from krishna that is our disease vitartam yat prati eta napati ti eta chatmani tad vidyat atmano mayam यथा भाषा यथा तम कंसीविंग ऑफ एनीथिंग सेपरेट फ्रॉम क्रिश्चन दैट इज माय इट इज लाइक द इट मे सीम टू बी रियल और इट मे सीम टू हैव सम सब्सटेंस बट इट इज नो मोर सिग्निफिकेंट देन रिफ्लेक्शन सीन इन द डार्कनेस some light is that people like to quote shakespeare so many things shakespeare said they have some some meaning is there a rose would smell as sweet by any other name you heard that saying before that's a saying from shakespeare then many sayings from shakespeare are proverbs in the english language so it's it's a pertinent observation a rose would smell as sweet by any other name in hindi it's called gola or gula so whether you call a rose rose or gula it's this is, the smell is the same i'm getting attacked here that's true concerning material languages but in krishna consciousness or, or the vaikuntha the naam and the nami are the same there's no difference between the name and the object that is named sometimes people say well we can you can say god or krishna or kali or durga or allah or i think well my god is my wife so it's all the same whatever you want you can call anything you like as god but that's not a fact what is the vastavik satya the actual reality that is krishna that is described in shastra vedyam vastavam atra vastu shrimad bhagavatam describes what is actual reality so here we have bhagavad gita as it is introductory description of actual reality covered by quality assurance is fundamental to all work undertaken by crown worldwide and so on so this is the the covering of maya which we consider to be real there are so many facts which we consider to be real rolls royce is the best car in the world Afghanistan is in a state of turmoil these are all facts that anyone would agree on Qatar produces natural gas that's not true Qatar didn't produce it it's already there Krishna produced it but Qatar extracts and exports natural gas 
So these are all things, these are all facts that we would all agree with. But it is yata bhaso yata tamaha. It is it is not the actual reality. It is simply the permutations and combinations produced of this material world. Reality as is described in Bhagavad Gita. So devotees they discuss that reality as described in chapter 10, text 9 of Bhagavad Gita as it is, which we'll read now with translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who has come, we're saying Jai. Why? Because He has come from that world to give us information of that world. This world is covered by crown worldwide and so many other varieties of maya. This, the, the spiritual world, we are divided from that by the viraja nadi, the, the river, the division. So on that side, the Vaikuntha world, there is Krishna Katha. And on this side, there is Gramya Katha. So we can have our entrance to the spiritual world by Krishna Katha and Krishna Kirtan. There are science fiction movies they show, they speculate on how someone can enter into another dimension by going through some passage, through some, even modern scientists, quantum Physicists, they, they talk of some space-time warp by which you can enter into another dimension. So the entrance into the simultaneous dimension is through Krishna Katha. The spiritual world it is here. This is called Krishna Katha Desh. Wherever there is Krishna Katha, there is the spiritual world. It's not that we are not in the spiritual world, it's just that we're not recognizing that we're there. We're identifying with this apparent reality here, that the real, the actual reality that we can experience if we are absorbed in Krishna Katha, that's, also, that's just here. Where is Krishna? He's just here. But we don't see Krishna. How can we see Krishna? Primanjana Chalita Bhakti Vilochanina Santasa Daiva Hitayeshu Vilokayanti Yam Shama Sundara Machincha Gunasya Rupa Govinda Madhi Purusham One can see Govinda in the heart if one's eye is treated or smeared with the ointment of love of Krishna. And not only in the heart but everywhere. Yomam Pashati Sarvatra Sarvam Chamai Pashati Tasyaham Nakanashami Sachame Nakanashati One who by remembrance of Krishna, love for Krishna, sees Krishna everywhere and in everything. He is always with Krishna. Krishna is never away from him. That is elaborated on in this verse. Machita Madgata Prana Bodhayanta Parasparam Katyantas Chamang Nityang Tushyanti Cha Ramanticha. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me, their lives are fully devoted to my service, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me, Krishna says. Purport. Pure devotees whose characteristics are mentioned here engage themselves fully in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Their minds cannot be diverted from the lotus feet of Krishna. Just see, where are we? We are trying to divert our minds towards Krishna. Pure devotees' minds cannot be diverted away from Krishna. And we are trying so hard, our mind is fully absorbed in Krishnaita Rabisha, topics other than Krishna. 
And we're just trying it to remember Krishna. But for, for actual devotees, their minds cannot be diverted from Krishna. Their talks are solely on the transcendental subjects. The symptoms of the pure devotees are described in this verse specifically. Devotees of the Supreme Lord are 24 hours daily engaged in glorifying the qualities and pastimes of the Supreme Lord. Their hearts and souls are constantly submerged in Krishna and they take pleasure in discussing him with other devotees. In the preliminary stage of devotional service they relish the transcendental pleasure from the service itself and in the mature stage they are actually situated in love of God. Once situated in that transcendental position they can relish the highest perfection which is exhibited by the Lord in his abode. Lord Chaitanya likens transcendental devotional service to the sowing of a seed in the heart of the living entity. There are innumerable living entities traveling throughout the different planets of the universe and out of them there are a few who are fortunate enough to meet a pure devotee and get the chance to understand devotional service. This devotional service is just like a seed and if it is sown in the heart of a living entity and if he goes on hearing and chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare that seed fructifies just as the seed of a tree fructifies with regular watering. The spiritual plant of devotional service gradually grows and grows until it penetrates the covering of the material universe and enters into the Brahma Jyoti effulgence in the spiritual sky. You like to read it? You like to read? You can continue. Please continue. In the spiritual sky, also that planet grows more plant, and more. Plant, plant. Plant, yes. This is called Goloka Vrindavana. The supreme, the supreme Wait a minute, you, planet excuse of... Excuse me, you jumped one line. In the spiritual sky also that plant grows. You see, you jumped from plant to planet. In the spiritual sky also that plant grows more and more until it reaches the highest planet, which is called Goloka Vrindavana, the supreme planet of Krishna. Ultimately, the plant takes shelter under the lotus feet of Krishna and rests there. Gradually, as the plant grows fruits and flowers, the plant of devotional service also produces fruits and the watering process in the form of chanting and hearing goes on. The plant of devotional service is fully described in the Chaitanya Chaitanya It is explained that, that when the complete plant takes shelter under the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, one becomes fully absorbed in love of God. Then he cannot live even for a moment without being in contact with the Supreme Lord. Just as a fish cannot live without water, in such a state, the devotee actually attains the transcendental qualities in contact with the Supreme Lord. The Srimad Bhagavatam is also full of such narrations about the relationship between the Lord and his devotees. Therefore, the Srimad Bhagavatam is very dear to the devotees. As stated in the Bhagavatam itself, Srimad Bhagavatam Puranam Amalam Yad Vaishnavam Priyam Vaishnavanam Priyam Vaishnavam Priyam In this narration, there is nothing about material activities, economic development, sense gratifications or liberation. Srimad Bhagavatam is the only narration in which the transcendental nature of the Supreme Lord and His devotees is fully described. Thus, the realized souls in Krishna consciousness take continu- they continue continual pleasure in hearing such transitional researches just as a young boy and girl takes pleasure in association. Jai, thank you very much. Machita madhata prana bodhiyantas prasthyam katiyantas chamang nityang tushyanti charamanti cha. Pure devotees always discuss Krishna always discussing. Pure devotees don't live in the material world. They live always with Krishna. We are advised to live in Vrindavan, not to live anywhere else but Vrindavan. 
So then we see that so many... Well, we see in Vrindavan, we can see many people who are living there and if we simply see, we'll see that many people living in Mathura district, their general behavior is uh, lower than that of the of what might consider the normal or civilized human being. There, there is a, at least one murder case a day registered in Natura district. All kinds of horrible things which are, many very bad things actually, which are not fit to be spoken in a public assembly. Some very bad things. Our devotees who live there, they know that. So we find there are many people, they come, they're shopkeepers, and they're living there and they're very happy that Devotees are coming from all over the world, but not for the right reason. They should be happy that devotees are coming all over the world to worship Krishna, but they're happy because they're coming because their business increases. And they'll pull out and say, Oh, who are you initiated by? Oh, he also comes to my shop, and they'll pull out a photo. And the innocent devotees believe that this man's actually showing the photo of their guru because he likes their guru, but actually it's just a trick to win their confidence and win their money. So who is a Brajbasi? We find that great devotees like Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was only in Vrindavan for a short time. Actually he wanted to go and live in Vrindavan, but he was instructed in a dream, no, you, you have a lot of service to do in Navadvip, which is non different from Vrindavan. So he only went there, it seems, once. And at that time, as a government officer, he was able to uh, check the activities of various dacoits who would plunder visiting pilgrims. So Bhaktinam Thako, was he a Vrajvasi? Doesn't seem like it. He, he built a house in Calcutta, not in Vrindavan. And he built another house in Godruma Dweep, Navarindham. So why did he build a house in Calcutta? His building a house is not for sense gratification. We build a house, we try to make it very nice, so we like. Nowadays people don't build, they, they just buy something which someone else has designed, or they rent, even more common. That they look to see, that you see the advertisements, new apartment block coming up, two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom apartments, swimming pool, centrally air conditioned, all the facilities they're offering, the sense gratification. But Bhakti Rao Thakur, he didn't build a house for sense gratification, he didn't build in Calcutta. He was overseeing the... Hare Krishna. Is that Gita? Please don't put on the floor. He was building a house and he used to oversee the construction. He'd be overseeing the construction. Now everyone's looking at the child. That is a, we have important things to speak, but a little disturbance and everyone, their mind will go away from Krishna Tata. If someone walks in the room and walks to the other side, everyone will look. There's nothing to see, just someone crossing the room. But it's very difficult for us to have any attention on Krishna Pata. Not only here, everywhere. Then we find also some people at the time of class, they become extremely interested in their fingernails. And they start playing with them. Somehow or other we have to have some... T I can also do some acting to try to get your attention but it's better if you if we just try to listen because we're talking I'm talking for my purification I can also get more inspiration if we all concentrate so Bhaktino Thakur as he was building his house Bhakti Bhagavan 
Yes, he was, he was overseeing the construction with Japa Mala in hand and chanting and overseeing. And some people seeing his enthusiasm in getting the building built, they sardonically remarked, they sardonically remarked that better than Kedanath Datta, as he was known, better than him being in the justice department, he was a magistrate of the government, he could be transferred to the public work, to the public works department. In other words, the construction department of the government. They were unnecessarily criticizing him. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he said that I'm very enthusiastic to construct this house because this is a place where Vaishnavas will be served. He didn't see it as a place for his own sense gratification, but he saw it as a place from which Krishna Bhakti could be practiced, and preached, and Vaishnavas could be served. So Bhaktino Thako, it appeared that he lived in Calcutta, which, when we think of holy places in the world, we think maybe of Makkah, Madina, Jerusalem, in France there's Lourdes, it's a holy place of the Catholic religion. Then we think of Badrinath, Kedanath, Rameshwaram, Puri, Dwaraka, all these places. But when we think of Calcutta, we don't think of a, we don't think this is a very holy place. When we think of Calcutta, what do we think of? Well, if we're not from Calcutta, then we probably think of dirt and poverty and overcrowding and heat and maybe Rasgullas, something. Howrah Bridge, Howrah Station, beggars. But Calcutta is a great holy place because Bhaktino Thakur lived there. And he stated, Jaidena Grihe Bhajana Deki Grihete Goloka Bhai. In my home, Performing bhajan, I see the whole home is transformed into Golok Vrindavan. He was worshipping the deity, Radha Madhava. Radha, this song, Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari, Kupi Janda Vallava Giri Varadhar, Bhakti Nautako song. Later he moved to, to Godruma Dham. Amishananda Kunja, Amishananda Shukadabashi, Shri Radhika Madhava Charanadasi. He identified himself not as a resident of Calcutta, as a resident of Swananda Shukada Kunja, the place he built for bhajan in Godruma Dham. And he identified himself as a maidservant of Radhika Madhava. So Bhaktino Thakur. He never lived in Calcutta. Srila Gorki Jodas Babaji Maharaj, he would always tell, he, he was living in Navadvip Dham, and from time to time he would send messages. People used to come from Calcutta, and he would tell, when you go back to Calcutta, tell Bhaktivinoda Prabhu, he used to call him, to leave Calcutta and come and join me in Navadvip for doing bhajan. So one time, one person came from Nav- he just visited Navadvip and he came and conveyed this message to Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, when you go back, you please tell Srila Gorki Storajas Prabhuji Maharaj, please convey my respects and blessings to him and tell him that the place that I live is not Calcutta. The place I live is not part of this material world. So Calcutta is glorious. Prabhupada was born there. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur started his preaching mission there. 
So Calcutta is glorious. But still we hear in the among the prominent activities of devotional service, Mathura Vas. Sadhu Sangha, Nama Kirtan, Bhagavad Shravan, Mathura Vas, Shraddhai, Sri Murti Shagon. These are the five principal activities of bhakti that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has recommended. Shadu Sangha. This is most important, associating with devotees. Because if we associate with devotees, then automatically there will be Nam Kirtan. Automatically there will be Bhagavad Shravan. Automatically there will be Maturabhas. Because devotees, they always live in Vrindavan. They're, ne- they're never anywhere but Vrindavan. And devotees worship the deity. So automatically these things will be there. And if there's not Sadhu Sangha, then even we may think we are doing so. There is no Nam Kirtan, there is no Bhagavad Shravan, there is no Maturabhas, there is no Archan. These, things, these activities are only possible by Sadhu Sangha. So Sadhu Sangha, that is the key to all these activities. Mathura Vas is mentioned. We don't find Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saying Kalkata Vas. He says Mathura Vas. So why glorify Kalkata? Kalkata is, I, just this is being given as an example, that Kalkata, Mathura has appeared in Kalkata by the presence of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Wherever he goes, Vrindavan Dham must be there. Whereas, it's possible that one may attempt to physically place his body in Vrindavan, but by his consciousness he is living in hell. That is also possible. Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saswar Thakur used to say of certain supposed Vairagis, living at Radha Kund. If they are not living at Radha Kund, they are living at Narak Kund. By their consciousness. So one may be living in Calcutta, which actually at that time, at the turn of the the end of the nineteenth century was a it wasn't didn't have the bad reputation it has since acquired. Now CMC, Calcutta Municipal Corporation, is trying to clean up Calcutta. But at the end of the 19th century it was a very clean, orderly, yeah, it was the British capital, capital of the British Empire in India. But still not Mathura, Kalikata. Place uh, this, Kaligat. They're not exactly sure, but they think Calcutta may be named after Kaligat which is one area on the bank of the Ganga, Hooghly. In Ganga there is called Hooghly. So that is a place of, uh, Kaligat means it's a place of Kaliupasana, which means poor goats. Various goats lose their life in the name of Kaliupasana at Kaligat, Bolidan. So that's not very holy. Although it goes on in the name of religion, it's a very low level of religion. But even such places are purified by the presence of such devotees as Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Srila Bhaktisudan Sarsvara Thakur. Shri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada because Matchita Madgata Madgata Prana Bodhayanta Paraspara Katiyanta Shamao Nityam Tushanti Chadama They're always discussing Krishna. And they come to this world just to teach us and inspire us to always chant about Krishna. Shravana Kirtana Karo Anukhana Ashata Pachala Chari 
we are recommended always perform Shavan Kirtan Anukam Anukshana Bengali pronunciation Anukam that means one moment after another every moment that should be filled with hearing and chanting about Krishna for this purpose people go to live in Mathura Vrindavan but many times we see they're not able to they leave everything become a Vairagi but then again desires for name fame arise or even many times it's it's seen that persons who apparently become Vairagis or Babajis they secretly or even not secretly maintain a relationship with widows so many widows they go to live in Vrindavan with the idea of accepting a renounced life they may go there serious to perform to do Krishna Bhajan. But due to lack of spiritual strength and taste, they think I'll go and I'll sit and I'll chant all day, but they're not able to do it because they, they don't have the practice, they don't have the taste. And they fall into gross maya. Prabhupada told that if you think you can go and sit and he told to his disciples in 1976 in Vrindavan that if you think that you can simply sit and chant all day at Radha Kund you will not you will simply eat and sleep and think of women and money and in this way fall down Kanaka Kamini instead of Kanaka Kamini we should think of Kanaka Kamini this is very good this is the best thing we can think of Kanaka Kamini. Kanaka Kamini means Radha Rani. <laughs> Golden Kamini means she she fulfills the desires of Krishna. But instead of seeing Kanaka Kamini as Radha Rani, we see Kanaka Kamini as something for me to enjoy. Money and materialistic women. So in this way we fall down. We should go to Radha Kund only to think of Karaka Kamini. Only to serve Karaka Kamini. But unless we have connection with that spiritual platform, then instead of thinking of the actual Karaka Kamini, Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari, then we will uh, be attracted to taking the position of an imitative Krishna. Instead of becoming the servant of Srimati Radharani, we'll become the servant of our senses. And then we'll try to find some... Becoming an imitation Krishna, we'll try to find out some imitation Radharani. And Maya can supply any number of imitation Radharanas. For the dog, there is... For Kutta, there is Kutti. It's in every species of life. The imitation will go on. So we should only live in Mathura. We should not live anywhere else. Living in Mathura means not necessarily constructing a cottage on the bank of Radha Kund. We cannot actually enter Radha Kund unless we have the actual adhika, actual eligibility. It is not that we we think, well, I I think I'll go to Vrindavan. Okay. Buy a ticket, Qatar Airways, Doha to Delhi, hire a taxi and I'm in Vrindavan. What shall we do? Let's, I'm feeling thirsty, let's go drink a lassi. So, this way is not the entrance to Vrindavan. Or if we think that by doing great tapasya, I shall enter Vrindavan. 
we can enter Vrindavan by the system that is given. System means how to get the mercy by which we'll be allowed into Vrindavan. That I wanted to discuss. That song is there. In one brief song or, or short song, the Rotandas Thakur has summarized the whole process of entering Vrindavan. The Rotandas Thakur, he himself, <laughs> he ran away as a young boy. He was the son of a king. A king in those days, men, many of them were big landowners. So he was the heir to a great estate, but he left. He ran away, ran away, ran. Ran all the way, non-stop. Practically non-stop. Practically not eating or sleeping. He ran from Bengal on the bank of the Padma River. He ran. Padma, then Padma goes to Ganga, going west. He goes from Padma River to Ganga, and then Ganga meets Yamuna. So along the bank of the Padma, Ganga, Yamuna, and eventually reached Vrindavan and studied the, he served his Gurudev Lokanath Goswami and Lokanath Goswami didn't want to accept any disciple but he practically by his intense service to Srila Lokanath Goswami he practically forced that he Toma Bina Kaya Chayama he prayed to Radha Krishna but he, he saw the path to Radha Krishna through Loganath Goswami who accepted him as his only disciple. Kavi Lokanath Mora Shange Loya Jabe Shirupa Pada Padme More Shamarkidin His desire was that he will be offered in the service of Rupa Rupa Goswami, Rupa Manjari only through Lokanath Goswami. He saw that. I have to make my connection here. So he came to Vrindavan and he was studying under Jiva Goswami with Shamananda Prabhu, Srinivas Acharya. Later they were given these names, Prabhu Acharya. As young boys, they were all studying together under Jiva Goswami, studying Vaishnava Siddhanta which had never been taught to anyone in the world previously, at least in this Kali Yuga, it, in the manner that Jeev Goswami taught. He, they were his first students. He, he compiled all the books which upheld the philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So they were his first students. They were the first students of this treasure of Vaishnava philosophy. So they all three together made a sankalpa, a vow that we shall live together. We have come here to Vrindavan, we shall live here throughout our lives together, very happily hearing and chanting about Krishna and serving the Vaishnavas. So they made this vow and shortly after that Jiva Goswami called them and said, now you have learned very nicely, now you all leave Vrindavan. And take this knowledge outside Vrindavan. Preach this knowledge. Don't just think we will live here in Vrindavan for your own pleasure, even spiritual pleasure. But you have some service to do. Bhakti Nautakur, same thing. You think you're going to Vrindavan? Then he got the transcendental message. No, you have service to do in Navadhi. You go there, don't go to Vrindavan. So Narottam Das, he lived some years in Vrindavan. Then after that, he went on the order of his guru, Jim Goswami. I just said his guru is Loganath Goswami. But Jim, Gos Jim Goswami practically taught him. So he was actually Shiksha guru in all respects. So Lokanath, uh, Narottam, he went back to Bengal and he taught Krishna conscious and he wrote many, many songs expressing his aspiration only to live in Vrindavan. 
So he taught how we, as conditioned souls, how we can begin to approach Vrindavan. In one short song, he has summarized the whole process. Goranga balite habi pulaka sharia hari hari balite nayane babine. We should chant the name of Goranga and the name of Krishna. By chanting the name of Goranga, one attains the eligibility to chant the name of Krishna. Because in this Kali Yoga, who can chant Hare Krishna? Who is qualified to chant the name of Krishna? Who is chanting the name of Krishna? Young Brahma, Varanendra, Ruja, Maruta, Stunvanti, Divyai, Stavai, Vedai, what is it? Vedai, Sama, Panishango, Panishadai, Gayanti, Yang, Samada, Dhyana, Vastita, Tadgate, Namanasa, Pashanti, Yang, Yogino, Yatsyantam, Navidu, Sura, Sura, Gana, Tasmai, Dhyana, so who is qualified to worship Krishna? Great demigods. They are singing his glories. The Vedas, the Upanishads, they are chanting his glories. Great yogis in meditation worship him. And all the devas and asuras together cannot come to the end of his glory. So who are we to chant the name of Krishna? The name of Krishna is can actually be chanted by liberated soul. Actual chanting begins from the liberated platform. Chanting means, O oh Krishna, O oh energy of Krishna, please engage me in your service. So when we actually desire the service of Krishna, then we can actually chant the name of Krishna. So our ineligibility, our anadika, is made up by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who by chanting his name Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shirdita Garadha Shiva Sadi Lord Bhaktarana by chanting the names of Gaur Gauranga and his associates one attains not exactly eligibility but the mercy by which even being unqualified we can begin to chant the name of Krishna. So actually by chanting the name of Gauranga, we should experience that ecstasy, hair standing on end, tears flowing from the eyes. We are not experiencing. Our hearts are hard. But we, by chanting, actually the result of chanting is that the heart should become soft with love of Krishna. So what is the difference between a hard heart and a soft heart? Hard heart means that we are nourishing desires for sense gratification. The heart becomes hardened. That means we don't want to serve Krishna because we have desires for sense gratification. This is addressed by Narottam Das. That ar kabe nitai chande karuna hai ve shamsara bhashana mar kabe tucha hai. When will I get the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu? And that mercy will be manifested by desires for material sense gratification becoming very insignificant. When we no longer have desires for sense gratification, that is the sign that we are getting the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu. Vishoy Charya Kabe Shuddha Habe When we give up desires for sense gratification, then the mind will be pure. That is the meaning of purity. When we have no desires for sense gratification, then Tabe Hame Hare Boshri Vrindavan. Then we can actually see Vrindavan. We cannot see Vrindavan if we have desires for sense gratification. Then instead of saying Radha Kund, Shama Kund, Giri Govardhan, 
Shri Shri Radha Madan Mohan, Shri Shri Radha Govinda, Shri Shri Radha Gopina. We'll see where is the Pepsi store. <laughs> this is what we shall see. Oh, sorry to say, I was very sorry. One time I was visiting Jaipur, which is the home of Radha Govinda and so many Raja deities. And I was speaking to one, one young man from Jaipur, was, I was with him, I was speaking with him. And I was noting that it's very nice to see so many young men are coming here for the darshan of Radha Govinda. And he said, I'm very sorry, but most of them are not coming for the darshan of Radha Govinda. They're coming because so many young women are coming nicely dressed. They come to see them. That was his analysis. And others have told me similarly also. So, it may be that even we're going to bring, or even in the presence of the Supreme Lord Himself, other desires are there. So then we cannot see Vrindavan. We have to be free from desires for sense gratification. How is it possible? By the mercy of Lord Nityananda. But then, if we can get to, by the mercy of Lord Nityananda, by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, become free from material desires and actually enter into Vrindavan, then Rupa Raghunaka Padi, Hoibayakuti, then we shall be very eager to study the teachings of Rupa Goswami and Raghunath Goswami. Gorya Vaishnavas are known as Rupa Anuga, followers of Rupa Goswami, not Chaitanya Anuga. The mundane scholars, they call Gorya Vaishnavas Chaitanya Aits. But they, and they, we do not call ourselves Chaitanya, it's Rupa Anuga. Because why importance is given to Rupa Goswami, not Chaitanya Anuga, Goranga Anuga. Rupa Nova, because Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dhata Svapadata. Because Rupa Goswami, he has revealed what is the heart's desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So without Rupa Goswami, we, c- we cannot attain Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we cannot attain Krishna. Without Rupa Goswami, he has revealed what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give. So Gorya Vaishnava is there known as Rupa Nuga. And what Rupa Goswami revealed, that was revealed the, in its most intimate and topmost form by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. So, in honor of Rupa and Raghunath, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami concludes almost every chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita by writing, Rupa Raghunatha Pade Rahumora Ash Chaitanya Charitamrita Kahe Krishna Das. So, in the beginning of devotional service, we study what is this Bhagavad Gita as it is. And as we become more conversant with the tenets of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings, if we actually become fortunate by the grace of the Rupa Nuga Acharya, then the time will come when we become eligible to understand who are Rupa Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami. What is what are their teachings? So the Rupa Goswami, Rupa Sanatan Bhatta Raghunath, Jeev Gopal Bhatta, Das Raghunath, Echai Goshaya Kari Charanabandhan, by worshipping the lotus feet of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, we can actually understand who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We can actually understand 
Who are Radha and Krishna? What is Vrindavan? Rupa Raghunath. Hmm. Padi Rupa Raghunath Padi Hoibaya Kuti. Then Narottam thus continues. Tabe Hama Bhujbo She Jogal Puriti. Radha Krishna love the loving exchanges of Radha and Krishna are the topmost pinnacle of devotional attainment that is possible to understand through the writings and the mercy of the six Goswamis, especially Rupa Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami. So Rupa Raghunatha Pade Rahu Mora Ash Pratana Karaya Shada Narotamda. So always desiring the mercy, always desiring the service of the lotus feet of Rupa and Raghunath. Narottam Das is praying in this way. So this way we can enter Vrindavan by Krishna Katha. Krishna Katha is the key. Krishna Katha, Krishna Kirta. That is the key to enter Vrindavan. We should not maintain any desire to remain in this material world, but we should cultivate the desire to enter the spiritual world. That is possible by Shravana Kirtana Koro Anukam, by constant hearing and chanting about Krishna and Ashata Pachala Chari and giving up all nonsense talks, Brahma Katha. In this material situation, it is as if we are impelled to speak and hear Gramya Katha. When you go to your office or factory or whatever, workplace, you are not allowed to speak Krishna Katha. If you speak Krishna Katha, they will cancel your contract and send you back to wherever you came from. Ban! Do not speak Krishna Katha. This is Hiranyakashipu's order. <laughs> to Prahlad. My dear son, I love you very much. As long as you do not speak Krishna Katha. And if you speak Krishna Katha, I shall kill you. This was Hiranyakashipu's love. This is love in the material world. This is morality in the material world. Everyone is very moral very nice, very considerate to each other, all cooperating on the basis that we shall not speak Krishna Katha. We shall all be very nice to each other by not remembering Krishna. What is the use of such morality? Better to be a thief, a liar, a cheat and a rogue than be Krishna conscious. Although actually a Krishna conscious person will not be a thief, a liar, a cheat or a rogue. And everyone who is not Krishna conscious must be a thief, a liar, a cheat and a rogue, even if superficially they appear to be very moral, because they are cheating themselves and others, and stealing away the opportunity of human life, and speaking all nonsense, and therefore they are rascals, because not Krishna conscious. So what to do? We are stuck in this situation. Well, we can follow Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He did his government duties, but simultaneously he did, he wrote more books than even most Acharyas who were Vairagis, who were 24 hours. They had, mostly the Acharyas, they are renounced, they had no family. But Bhaktinoda Thakur produced more books, more writings than most of the Acharyas. And he was also, he had a job and thirteen children. He was a responsible householder. But so much service he did. And even if we take even one of the songs of Bhaktinoda Thakur, any one song, any one song that he has given us, any one kirtan, is indicative of his pure devotion 
and tremendous benediction to the world. Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janda Vallabha Girivarad Hari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari By contributing this song, Srila Bhaktino Thakur, who is known as a resident of Calcutta, has done far more service to human society than Mother Teresa of Calcutta, or even millions of Mother Teresas, whose ministration was simply to the body, or of course she also believed in Jesus, but her understanding of God was so... Christianity is like that. It's so superficial and incomplete and imperfect that even the slightest trace of real Vaishnavism is far more valuable than any belief in God or belief in Jesus, even of someone lauded as a saint, like Mother Teresa. So Bhakti Thakur, he didn't only write, write this one, Kirtan, but so many Kirtan, so many books, so many wonderful books. And those of you who know Hindi especially, it would be fairly relatively easy for you also to learn Bengali. Then you can read his books. Of course, now they're mostly being translated. But in the original, there's, it's, it's more valuable. You can't actually translate all these things into English. English was developed for talking nonsense and going to hell. <laughs> Whereas Sanskrit and the languages based on Sanskrit they are meant for talking to Krishna. They are meant for understanding Krishna. They, Krishna himself is Krishna's language. So you can, of course, we don't have time even for reading Prabhupada's books. That is our misfortune. But we need not spend all our lives simply working, making money. We should think. It's a, yeah, if you have, you can earn some money here, then donate for Krishna's service, save some money, retire early, and go to Vrindavan. Actually go to Vrindavan. Not to the Pepsi shop in Vrindavan. Actually go to Vrindavan. Means to live a life full of Shravan Kirtan. We should, in, we should aspire for that. When can I go to Vrindavan? Or even better, go to Mayapur. That is non-different from Vrindavan. But the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is flowing there. Vrindavan is very difficult. Little offense, you have to suffer. That's also Radharani's mercy in another way. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his mercy is flowing in Mayapur. So it's... I always, I always think for me, it's, it's more suitable. I, I don't find any eligibility for myself to enter Vrindavan. But Mayapur I feel comfortable. And here, I can stay here. This is a place for fallen souls. So very good for me. So we can uh, plan like that. Sometimes people go to astrologers. What was my previous birth? What does it matter? Whether we are dog, frog, monkey or king. What does it matter? Rather, we should think, what will be my next birth? Or rather, no more next birth. Next birth should be in the womb of a gopi in Vrindavan. That's all. Then go to Krishna. But how are we going to do that? We're not going to do that by absorbing our mind in nonsense. You have to absorb the mind in Krishna so that we have to get the associate. We have to see how are we going to live our lives in such a way that we don't become a dog, a frog, a cat, a monkey, a pig or even Indra. By chanting Hare Krishna you can also become Indra. But who wants to be Indra? What's the use of becoming Indra? If being Indra is no better than being a pig. It's just for sense gratification. That's all. Maybe a little bit more pious but uh, pure devotees, they see 
vidhi mahendra adishcha kitayate being brahma or indra it's no more it's no better than being a worm in stew what's the use it's just another way of forgetting krishna that's all radha kita janma hau jata tu adas vahimokka brahma janma nahiya radha bhakti no thakur again has taught us that I'd rather be a worm if I can be your devotee, Krishna. What's the use of being Brahma if you're not a devotee? So we should see. Of course, we can't fully plan our lives, but to some extent we can plan, and then if Krishna wants to fulfill, that's up to him. But we should think how we can engage in hearing and chanting about Krishna always. Not that we have to spend all our lives simply engaged in family affairs. We can come out. Even when all the husband and wife can live together in Mayapur, Vrindavan, Puri, any of these dhams, or anywhere where there are devotees, that is as good as a dham. And in this way, become fixed in this principle matchita madgata prana bodhiyam tatvaspur kathiyantas chamang nitam tushanti chadanti engaged in hearing and chanting about Krishna serving the Vaishnavas so we cannot simply jump into that if we try to one day we are in materialistic consciousness and all of a sudden we try to imitate Haridas Thakur. That won't work. We have to practice now hearing and chanting about Krishna. And go on gradually increasing more and more and more and more. Make Vrindavan here by hearing and chanting about Krishna. Practice that. Hare Krishna. Is there any question about this?